Welcome to episode 137 of the Startup Show. Today we are here in Zurich and I'm talking to Ben, who is the CEO and co-founder of Lecce. And we talk about how you get top tier advisors. We talk about all about Lecce, but we also talk about how important it is to live outside of your comfort zone. Make sure to stay tuned. Welcome to episode 137 of The Startup Show. Today we are here in Zurich and I'm very excited to talk to the CEO and co-founder Ben from Legi. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Cedric, for having me at the show. It's such a pleasure to have you. And as you know, um, first part of The Startup Show is always about you to really get to understand who you are. And so also my audience and potential investors uh, get to understand who the person is in the hot seat today. So Take it away, give us um, you know, a minute or two about yourself, so we all are on the same page about that. I'm from Germany originally, and then I went for a volunteering service for a year to the Philippines um, before coming here to Zurich to study physics. I went like, for, for a semester abroad in, in Paris, and um, then during my studies I also worked as a software engineer for, as a side job for two years. And pretty much directly after the studies, I started Legi. What you did is like you went directly from academia uh, to founding your own startup. Mm -hmm. How did that uh, happen? How come you were inspired to start your own company at, let's say, this stage of your life? I think it's good to start early because you're still more free. You know, you don't have family, you don't have so many obligations. You, you maybe don't need so much money at the beginning. Like I was still living on a student budget for a longer time. So that, that really helps. Uh, why I became inspired to, to found something was really through my two friends. We started talking about this topic already for two years. During our studies, we, we did a big um, travel between bachelor and master's. Yeah. We took half a year off and we did a world trip and we read some books about entrepreneurship, like um, Running Lean or Zero to One, so these classics. And uh, we, yeah, we talked about ideas and what we could do. And so this thought was already there for quite some time. And then we kept on thinking about that and we were talking to people. And that's also how we met um, our advisors um, after our studies and how this all got started. Before we get like, more into what Legi does, maybe give us like a short rundown on like how you came up with this idea. As you know, like I, I studied physics, which is not directly like what you do now. So um, it was really through our talking to people, through our advisors, um, Paul and Mike, who founded Doodle some years ago. Um, and are now angel investors and we got in touch with them. Like we were discussing about these problems of ownership and private companies and startups especially, um, which they face every day. And that's how we got this, yeah, like thinking about this idea and what we could do there. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. Good, so maybe give, you know, my audience a short um, pitch about what Legi does. That would be great. What we are doing is we're building the um, missing accounting software for your cap table. Yeah. So for startups cap tables. In, in startups, like the ownership is really at the center, at the core of the startup. And we talked to a lot of startups and um, many have problems. Errors happen, shares get lost due, due to rounding errors, for example. Um, and it's, a lot, it's about a lot of money, you know, and then you have intransparency between in investors and, and startups. Um, and it's expensive, like it's a lot of lawyers involved there. And um, so really um, building a software for everything around that, for the cap table, but also for the shareholder management and planning funding rounds, it, give, it gives founders also a lot of power to really know the details about what they're negotiating, you know. Yeah. So everything around that, that's really um, what we're building. And then we have really interesting ideas what we could build on top. So our vision at the moment is really to become the leading platform for this in Europe. And then there are many interesting things we can do on top of that. Mm -hmm. For example, tackling what you're also interested in, um, liquidity in private companies. Yeah. I mean, like that would be my next question about the, the vision of, of like, you know, when you say like, where do you want to be? Or what, what is the status quo that you want to change that we have right now yeah. um, within, let's say, this cap table ecosystem? So in the, in the, in the midterm, it's really professionalizing all this, bring transparency into this ecosystem, like um, giving, really empowering entrepreneurs. That's our, our mission, you know? And, becoming the leading platform for this in Europe. But then also we see all these problems which are connected to this topic, you know, and um, which we can tackle afterwards and which we're also working on thinking about how we could do that. So like everything around ownership and private companies, which is at the moment really non-digital and um, like very bureaucratic and lawyer based and, uh, you know, slow processes and difficult process, which makes it very illiquid. Yeah. Um, and also really thinking about how we could help companies to spend less time uh, on lawyer costs 
and have the advantages of liquidity, for example, for employees if they want to sell their options, for example, um, or, or early investors. And at the moment, it's really like we see this trend of public companies. Going public is really expensive and yeah. companies do it less and less. So it's not really an option anymore, or it's more difficult uh, to, to become public. So breaking up this binary change between you're private and everything is non-liquid, and then you go public and then everything is liquid, you know? <laughs> That's kind of too black-white. And right. I think today with technology, we can do a lot of cool stuff there where we can have a more continuous transition from being not so liquid at the beginning to becoming more and more liquid if you, if you want to. Right. One of the interesting things that um, within your company is that you really have some strong advisors. You briefly mentioned Mike uh, from, from Doodle. So tell us how that happened, that you, you were able to get such top tier um, advisors on board. Mm -hmm. We are really happy to have them and it helps a lot to have good advisors. Like we were looking for opportunities to start a company and they were also looking for people they could, uh, they could start projects with. Like they, they started their a project which they called mini incubation, where they really try to support founders to, to develop something. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got in touch, you know, and then so, so it kind of was an in, uh, like the initiative came from both sides, and um, I think we convinced them, and they convinced us. So, <laughs> so that's how it started. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you look at, let's say, you know, like you came out of the ETH, um, what, what did you see? Let's say how, let's say, the ETH encourages people to like really go into entrepreneurship, um, or do you feel like maybe there is like room to grow there? Yeah, I think it's both. There's a lot already there, and like you have, especially recently, you have a lot of initiatives. Um, you have space where students can do projects. You have the MTech master program, which is a lot about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. um, you have the student entrepreneur club. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, but I think um, compared to many other successful, like for example, Stanford, and it's a different level, you know, and I think ETH yeah. can still do something there. Sure. What do you say, let's say, when you're, when you're looking at the, the roadmap of, of Leche, where, where do you see, let's say, the next you know, couple of milestones or the next few months? At the moment, we are really working on bringing a lot of very important features um, online, like for, for really this um, ownership management, for example, exit modeling is one thing which we are um, tackling right now. So we will hire some people soon, that's also a big milestone for us, and then we're really focusing on growth to really grow in Europe. At the same time, we are working on pilot projects in the area of also tokenization of, mm -hmm. of equity. So, so there are like different milestones planned there, but you know, it's... Um, Still a bit of so, pilot project. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, absolutely. Good. Um, and you know, like for what I like to ask is always when you look at let's say the local ecosystem. I mean, like you're probably already very internationally um, on the road with like Mike and and Doodle. Mm -hmm. But like maybe when you see like what's going on locally, uh, what's your impression and how do you perceive the local startup ecosystem? Mm -hmm. I think it's really good in Zurich. So yeah. my vision is really. Zurich could be a, a startup hub in Europe also more than it is already and. Uh, because you have like this very good talent hubs, you have the ETH and you have EPFL in Lausanne, which is really important. Like good people is basically the most important thing you need. And you have a lot of funding possibilities here. So I think it's a, it's a good, good system and um, a lot, lot of good business angels and funds. So I think it can still improve, but um, it's in a good way. So what specifically could be improved? Like one, one thing is to, it's already changing, but um, like software companies, I feel are still like not have a bit more difficult time um, to get support here because people are really looking or historically were looking for a lot of IP based, you know, research oriented um, companies, medtech, mm -hmm. biotech and stuff like that. So more this ICT sector to focus more on that, I think, I think is a good idea. And also to think more internationally, not Switzerland, but really yes, as a global yeah. market. Yeah. Who is your role model in the startup world? I would say it's Mike. We already talked about him. And yeah. he's really a cool guy here. On the one hand, he's really like with his feet on the ground and he, he has a really sharp mind and sees the, the important spots where you have to focus on. Okay. So it's really good, yeah. What are some tips for balancing work and life? That's a good question because it's very important for me. It's, it's a stressful life if you're mm -hmm. um, founding a company and it's important to also do something for your mind and body. So uh, what I do and uh, can recommend is doing sports, swimming, it's very good, meditating, stuff <laughs> like that. Okay, what's most important to you in an investor? I think it's that the values are aligned. Mm -hmm. So to be founder friendly, for example, um, especially for us, it's really important that we are not building something for investors, we're building something for companies, mm -hmm. for, for startups. 
Um, so to have these these values on the same page is really important for, for cooperating. Mm -hmm. I mean, like now you're soon hiring. So what's your most important trait you're looking for when you hire someone? I'm still learning there myself because, yes. as you said, we, I, we haven't hired yet. But <laughs> yes, <I know. laughs> so what we're looking for is courageous people who can take responsibility, who are fair players. Mm -hmm. Like you have, you know, honest and good communication. That's very important. Mm -hmm. um, and the last question, what do you think is the most important character in an entrepreneur? I think it's um, being courageous because you, you really have to do new things every day and go out of your comfort zone every day yeah. and that takes some courage. But that's also what it makes why, it, why it's so interesting because sure. you learn a lot of new things all the time. The last part of the startup show is always about like you leaving some kind of legacy, giving mm. some expert advice to the next generation who is watching out there. So maybe take it away and give us like say 30 to 60 seconds of advice of like where you feel you are the expert. Like I'm, I'm also still uh, learning a lot, but like already it's so interesting to see that when you really step out of your comfort zone, you learn a lot of things and experience a lot of things which you would have never expected. So really to to be courageous and maybe not to take the easy path. I see friends who just continue their PhD, which maybe sounds difficult, but at the same time, it's kind of the you know classical, you just continue as before. You did your mm -hmm. studies, you do your PhD. Um, but many of these people don't actually know what they really want to do. And I think to be courageous and try different things and mm -hmm. think about different options is very important. So that's what <laughs> I would give as advice. To so like live outside of your comfort zone or like... Yeah. <laughs> <I'd> like <this. laughs> that, that, that's a good summary, yeah. Okay, good, Ben. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank I really you. appreciate your time. Thank you so much, everybody, who stayed all the way till the end and tuned in today. Make sure to stay a few more seconds to see the preview of next week. And I'll see you there. Have a great day. Hi. My name is Manuel Hook, co-founder and CEO of SoFlow. Tune in next Monday and subscribe to this channel.